Okay, it says we're going live, so we should be starting here in just a second. Watch your screens. Good luck, everybody, and enjoy yourself. Right on YouTube. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Should be up and room. Yeah. Huh? Not on my side. Not it's not showing on mine either. Rumble is. Well, Rumble is showing, Bobby says. So why is it not on refresh? It's working. It's, you guys are live. Joe. Okay, we're live, Joe. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Coin Ops Coin Talk Podcast. From Joe Joe Durbin uh, Durbin Coin Auctions, we got Alden Davis here with us, Brad Carloff, and uh, of course Coin Ops Robert Lawson. So I'll give you to uh, Brad now. We'll do a little news, and then we'll get going. Welcome everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, in the news this week, we will have uh, a review of the coin shows coming up on the twelfth uh, and the thirteenth Longview Coin Show in Texas. And the PNNA in Tukwila, Washington, the 12th and the through the 14th, Michigan State, Warren, Michigan. There's a big one to get to. Uh, on the 13th, uh, Eagle Coin Club, Lexington, North Carolina, the Cleveland Coin Expo in Broadview Heights, Ohio, and the Atlantic uh, Coin uh, Numismatic uh, Society, Linwood, New Jersey. Excuse me a second. Coins plus hole, please. Phil, grab that. All right. Sorry, guys. Business interrupted. On the 14th, the South Brevard, Melbourne, Florida Coin Show, the 71st Street Coin Show in Indianapolis, Indiana, is also coming up. The uh, greater, on the 14th, the Greater Worcester um, in Audubon, Massachusetts, Auburn, Massachusetts, sorry, Orange Coin Show in Orange, Connecticut the West Suburban Coin Show in Countryside, Illinois, South St. Paul, St. Paul, Minnesota, and the Montgomery County Coin Show in Telford, Pennsylvania. On the 19th and the 20th, Westchester Coin Show in Terrytown, New York. The 19th to the 21st is the big Georgia Numismatic Association Show in Dalton, Georgia. Buffalo, um, is next in uh, actually Creek Tanauga, New York. I'm sure it's just outside of Buffalo. The California State Numismatic Association in Arcadia, California, also all weekend, the 19th through the 21st. On the 20th, Charlottesville, Virginia is uh, a one day show. Uh, on the 21st, Tucson, Arizona, Fort Lauderdale, and Plantation, Florida. The Buckeye Coin Club in Hilliard, Ohio. The North Attleboro in Massachusetts. The Onondaga Numismatic Association in Liverpool, New York, also on the 21st. And Nashua, New Hampshire Coin Show. Remember, coming up, the huge uh, Central States Numismatic Society show, May 1st through 4th in Schaumburg, Illinois. Over 400 tables, including Coins Plus and heritage auction lot viewing, educational programs. Ed, uh, we do have an admission of $15 a day, $30 for a three-day pass to get into the Central States Numismatic Society show. Well worth it. And as a review today, gold, last check, was $2,362 an ounce, and silver at $28.25 an ounce. There you have it, all the news that's fit to report. Thank you very much, Brad. Good stuff there. Good stuff. All right. Well, without further ado, we have Robert. Robert Lawson is going to do the uh, Mercury Dime series presentation coming up now. Enjoy, guys. Hello, everybody. It's me, Robert, with Coin Art. Uh, hopefully, I can get this presentation to you. I'm going to do a Mercury Dime series, an in depth study of the American Silver Mercury Dime series, of course, presented by me. Um, work with me, guys. Uh, just to let everyone know, real quick, no news right now on my uncle. If anything comes up, I'll let you know. However, let's go through this and have a good time today. Okay, exploring the legacy of the U.S. Mercury Dime series in the Rome 
of Newsmatics, few coin series hold as much allure and historical significance as the U.S. Mercury Dime series. It was minted from 1916 to 45. Uh, this iconic coin not only represents a pivotal era in American history, but also embodies the artistic prowess and cultural resonance of its time. From its inception to its enduring legacy, the Mercury Dime continues to captivate collectors and enthusiasts worldwide. Let's look into this fascinating coin series and unravel its rich tapestry and history, design, and newsmatic value. Okay, everybody, just to let you know, uh, Mr. Wyman, now I'm not going to read this per se. If you want to take a screenshot, you're welcome to. But uh, the historical context is basically Whitman took in, or Weinman, I'm sorry. Uh, he was entered into com competition, and he had to go against Barber, which Barber worked at the Mint at the time. And we was taken in, they were looking into World War I, so there's a lot of adversity, uh, adversary there. Uh, this gives you a little bit better ideal of the Mercury Dime. Uh, during the time, even uh, George Morgan was at the Mint, which he was the one who took and did the Morgan Dollar. So there's a lot of good people with a lot of experience. Um, I know from reading Wyman, his uh, association with Barber, it was, and it tells it in here that there was a little bit of a conflict but you know barber was replacing his own coin which he had the dime the quarter the half dollar all of them were barber's design so the mint director which uh let's see here who is that i mean not it wasn't the assistant um but the mint director himself took in robert woolley he's the one who initiated all this in 1916 and it began at the beginning of the year that's why we have both the 1916 Mercury Dime and the 1916 uh, Barber Dime. These are the facts that you should know about your Mercury Dime. If you want to get it, it'll help you to keep you from getting counterfeits. Now, it shows your designer. Uh, some of this stuff I didn't know because I've never counted the reads on a Mercury Dime, but there's 118 reads on it on your edge. Uh, Philadelphia, Denver, San Francisco. I did not put it in there, but also West Point. I should have put that in there. I thought I did, but I guess I missed it. Oh, okay. I showed the 2016 W. I just didn't put it up on the mints. Uh, West Point did the one year of 2016 for the gold commemorative. I do consider it part of the Mercury Dime series. Um, I got one from my own personal set. Uh, However, this here gives you your metallic content, which is 90% silver, 10% copper. So the silver content is, of actual pure silver is 0 0.18084 ounces in each of the coins. And that'd be an uncirculated coin. Um, I'm certain a coin dealer can tell you most times when they get mercury dimes or dimes in general, they weigh them due to the factor of wear and the loss of silver that way. Here gives you an idea. I took a screenshot of PCGS's price guide. Now, this will give you an idea of what it would cost you for just a year set. No mint marks or nothing from good for all the way into an MS67. It also will show you down below full bands. Now, you have to have at least an MS60 to get full bands and above. Um, even though I think you'll find that a full band, I think some people are considering AUs. They will give them full bands as well, um, but it's not represented in this chart. That's just from my experience. Okay, a couple of uh, patterns that not many people know about in the Mercury Dimes. Now, here's the 1916. This is the pattern, the Judd 1794 backslash 1984. Very subtle difference. If you look at the bottom band, there's instead of having just the one band going across as normal, you've got the double bands down there. That's about the only thing you're going to find unique. So if you have a 1916 plane, you may want to look. Uh, and the reason I even say that, guys, is because here, if you look at this pattern, 
This is the J1794 backslash 1982. The only things wrong with this here, 1916, folks, I mean, there is other subtle differences in the lettering and such, but if you notice, there's no designer's initials on the back side of the dime. So this is something that I would suggest here again, you know, if you're looking through your scrap silver, things of that nature, you can see this pattern was well used. In fact, there's one that's a VF-12 that sold for 25000 and a VF-25 that is sold for 40000 everybody. Now, this is what uh, was noted on PCGS. So, this is just giving you an idea that, you know what, these might still be out there. Now, I, as I was reading, they suspected that there's four of these patterns known to exist. I don't know that all of them have been accounted for. Just letting you know that. So, you may want to be looking. So, now here you go. Uh, I am going to read this here because Wyman never discussed the name of the model for the autos, and no person ever claimed to have been her. The Wing Liberty is widely believed, however, to have been based on a 1913 bust Wyman sculptured of Elsie Stevens. Elsie Stevens was the wife of Wallace Stevens, a lawyer and an insurance executive who later became famous as a poet. Okay. Uh, Wallace and Ellis took and rented an apartment from Wyman from 1909 to 16. In a draft of his unpublished autobiography, Woolley wrote that Wyman refused to name the model, but told him it was the wife of the lawyer who lived above his Manhattan apartment. Woolley in later versions omitted the location, saying only that Wyman said that the wife of the lawyer's friend. Woolley recorded that he was told that the model wore the top of an old pair of stockings to stimulate the cap in 1966. Holly Stevens, Wallace and Ellis's daughter, noted in her edition of her father's letter that Elsie had, in fact, been the model for Wayman's dime and, guys, the Walking Liberty half dollar. So there you go. That's a little bit of information that you may not have known. Uh, I didn't know who the model was, but sounds pretty good to me. I don't know about you guys, but it does to me. Okay, now what I am going to take and concentrate on is there is approximately 10 Mercury Dimes that were have less than 2 million minted. And I wanted to take and concentrate on those, give you an idea of one, the beauty and of the values that, you know, if you're going to decide to collect it, you want to take and look at these because this is going to be the majority of your expenses. So, and you don't have to get an MS-63 I mean, if your budget only allows for a good four, build your set that way. But here is, I took and I grabbed this from PCGS. It's a beautiful 16D dime. It's got full bands and PCGS graded it a 67 FB, which you can see is a really, really nice dime. Okay, now I wanted to go over the bands for you, okay? On the... Mercury dime, there's bands that go through the center, as you can see. You have now different companies do this differently, so you'll have to find out. Anex does it one way, NGC does it another, PCGS does it a different way. I'm certain ICG does, and many of the offset different grading companies. Some of them probably don't even know what a split band is, sadly, but those are the ones that when you find them, you know. And if you find a true split band, you may want to buy it. Who knows? But right here, I'm describing what the split band is as opposed to a full split band. And if you look at the photograph on the upper left, to me, this is how I've always taken and graded my Mercury Dimes. There's no bands, which is up on top. Then you have your split band. But notice how the bands are flat. There, there's just no depth to them where the full split band are rounded off and they're also split. This is how I take and this is how I grade my Mercury Dimes. Um, that is one of the ways to tell how well the coin is struck. And later on, you're going to find out there are some condition rarity coins in the Mercury Dime series. But I wanted you guys to understand when someone talks about a split band, what they're referring to. Okay, back to Roaring Twenties, guys. Um, the Mercury Dimes were struck in substantial numbers until 1930, with the notable exception of the 16D issue. 
And from 21 to 23, when an economic downturn caused the need for coins to be diminished. There were coin, or there were no coins minted in 1921 at the San Francisco Mint. In 22, no dimes were minted at any mint facility. This had not happened since 1826. So it had been a long time we'd been making dimes. In 1923, no dimes were minted at the Denver Mint. So if you see any of these dates, counterfeit. And here we go, the 1921 Mercury Dime. Uh, this is one of the semi-keys with only 1.23 million minted. The values of it go from an MS-63 at 2600 to an MS-65 full split band of $6,500. Uh, some people might find that reasonable, and they may want to put it in their collection, but it's still a beautiful coin, and the one that you're looking at, PCGS graded at MS-67 full bands. Gorgeous coin. Okay, next is the 1921D Mercury Dime, okay, with only 1.08 million minted. You can see your prices there. I'm showing you a picture that I got off the of PCGS of the MS67 full band. I tried to stay within that, everybody, just to give you an idea. This one here, as you can tell, the MS63 is $3,650, and the um, MS65 in a full split band is $11,500. Wildlife, give me a moment. We'll get there. Okay, right here, and a lot of people forget about this in here. It's a 1926S Mercury Dime. By the way, I'll answer questions, guys, at the end. So if you have some questions, hold on until the end. But I may have already covered them, so just letting you know. Here, the 26S has a minage of $1.5 million, an MS-63, $3,150, whereas the MS-65 full split band is $9,750. Also, uh, the picture there is from PCGS of the 67 full band, but just remember, folks, that all these prices are based off of what I got from PCGS. Prices will vary. Um, Brad has a coin shop. that He's got three of them. He may have some of these that you may be looking at that you may want to get and purchase. I know I checked the Florence. He ain't got none because I need to fill my setup, but I'm just giving you guys an idea. Okay, with the onset of the Great Depression, the mintage dropped again in the 30s and 31. Coinage of dimes was suspended entirely in 32 and 33. The low mini states are not rare today as many of them were hoarded. Now, see, a lot of people just hoarded the brand new rolls. Uh, and you'll find out. But um, in 30 and 31 dated dimes were provided readily available from the bank once the economy improved. With the economy beginning to pick up again, coins resumed in 34, and the dimes were struck in large numbers each year throughout the end of the series. Now, just to let you know, there were no coins minted in 1930 at the Denver Mint. 1932, no dimes were minted at any facility. 33, no dimes were minted at any facility. And in 34, at the San Francisco Mint, there was no dimes minted. Again, if you find any with those dates, those are counterfeits. Here I wanted to show the 1930 San Francisco. It has a minage of only 1.8 million. Still, it's pretty reasonable for some of you. At an MS-63 being $240 and a 65 full split band being $1,525. Uh, a lot of people can obtain that. Um, there, the one I'm showing is from PCGS. Again, as I said, I tried to take and stick with the uh, 67 grade, but this is a 67 plus full bands on the 30. Beautiful one. Okay, next up, here's the 1931D. Uh, it's got a minimum of 1.26 million. Now, I can tell you for a fact, 1931 Denver has a double die obverse. It is in the Cherry Pickers Guide. I have one in my collection. I didn't know when I put it in there, but it's in there, and it's got some value to it. For the normal one in the MS-63, it's worth 200, 65 full split bands, 650. Very obtainable in mint state, in my opinion, for some people, you know. And again, just take and uh, look for them. Who knows? Here's the 31S. Now, it also has a double die obverse. It, I did not go into the varieties of that such people just because I didn't want to, but this has got a minage of 1.8 million. Beautiful, beautiful coin. Okay, guys, let's get onward. 
Okay, in the 1940s, needless to say, we got involved in World War II. Okay, I took and I just wanted to show a few pictures of that. The Second World was a global conflict that lasted from 39 to 45. The vast majority of the world's countries, including all the great powers, fought as part of the two opposing military alliances, the Allies and the Axis. Many participating companies invested all available economy or economic, industrial, and scientific capabilities into the total war, blurring the distinction between civil and military resources. Now, the reason I did bring this up, guys, is for this next coin, the 1942 over 41. I believe if you look at any, what I just said, any year, that we had a major war in America, if you look at the coinage, you will find there's usually a variety in there. Uh, you have this here, the 42 or 41, and the Jefferson nickel, you have the 43 over the 42. Uh, and again, World War I, you have the 18 over 17 standing Liberty quarter. I could go on for a long time. I'm not going to, I just wanted to point it out to you guys. If you know when the major wars were, look at the coins for that year. There's a good chance you're going to find one with a variety. And again, this is just the 42 over 41. Now, I took the top three, ANEX, PCGS, and NGC. I got a pop report from them. That's why these numbers. Oh, I've got my train going by. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Oops. Okay. But we took, and I apologize for that. However, we took in, uh, in the top three, they had 7,863. Now, I did not include raw coinage or an estimate of the raw coins because I figured in this pop report, uh, any experienced collector can tell you there's most probably a percentage of those that were submitted and then resubmitted trying to get a better grade or so forth. So I figured that the minage of 7,863 is probably pretty close to being accurate. Now, here we go. Next is the 42 Denver. Now, it's only got a pop of 4,001. Again, I did the same thing, ANX, PCGS, and NGC. Uh, there's the values of it. This in here, I have cherry-picked these out of scrap silver, guys. Now, I've never found nothing as beautiful as that MS68 plus full band that's showing from PCGS. However, I did take, I have, I think, I don't know, Brad would have to take because he submitted it to get it graded. But I want to say it was about, it might have been a very fine 25 or 35, I don't remember. However, it's a beautiful coin and it's still, you can cherry pick that in scrap silver. So if you're looking through scrap silver, you may want to look into those. Okay, now somebody asked a little bit earlier the difference between the 1945 Mercury Dime Micro S. Here again, I had to use the top pops as giving you an estimate as to the or how many there is out there. Now that uh, the mintage of the pops of 7417, I think, is low. I would say you can probably figure about 14,000. This is just my guess. Mercury Dimes or Micro S. Um, they, the picture I'm showing on the left really was a bad depiction. However, there's, there's just really no way of showing the difference between a micro S and the normal S other than what I'm showing you, which is the styles, but it is considerably smaller. So if you turn one over, you will notice quickly that the 45S has got a micro or a normal S. Don't forget, there's an S over horizontal S that you can get out of the cherry pickers. There again, I never covered it. Okay, the Enduring Legacy, other than Mercury Dime ceased production in 1945, its legacy has endured to this day. Its timeless design and historical significance ensures its place in the annals of numismatic history. I love this series myself. The Mercury Dime series serves as a reminder of Americans' enduring spirit, the resilience and commitment to liberty, whether cherished as a collector's item or admired for its aesthetic beauty. The Mercury Dime remains a symbol of excellence and innovation in the coinage designs. Now, I added the 1945 Mercury Dime into my discussion here. 
and it's primarily because of the full split band. Even though there was a mintage of 159,130,000, the full split band is extremely, extremely scarcer than that. Uh, I just noticed, my apologies, I should have grabbed a pop report on it. I didn't, but the prices, I think, will give you a good idea as to what the difference is on the pricing for that coin. The regular above the MS-63 is 22. A 63 full split band, 10,000, as opposed to a 65, $45. A 65 full split band of almost 20,000, and that price has just went down a little bit, everybody. Here's some of the items that you can get. I do, now, I wish these were my coins. I could not go and find my coins. I do have an off-center 1945 Mercury Dime. It has split bands, I believe. Um, a 1941 with the clip. I got that from Bubba Scully's off of eBay. Thank you, Bubba. I hope you don't mind. Uh, the off-center is from Heritage Auction. And then I went over to Variety Vista to show you guys a couple RPMs. I search for these anytime I'm searching through scrap silver or any silver. This is just two of the many RPMs that are absolutely beautiful that you can find in the series. So uh, I can tell you, you can find them in a lot of different years. Your best bet would be to get a cherry picker's guide. I think we might, uh, I know Brad Karloff's got something on sale that you can buy from him. Just a little mention there, but we don't want to advertise for Brad right now. He's, yeah, he's being Brad, but we love him. Okay. <laughs> Now, I wanted to show everybody, here's something. I wish I could get you a nice close-up of it, but apparently in the Mercury series, the uh, they took and the Liberty Bell 7, they actually had 52. Why 52? I thought it's like, man, they could not have been a collector because why 52? A roll has 50 in it, so I don't know. But when they took in in 1999, when they found... The Liberty Bell 7, they took and they raised it, got rid of the water while they found the dimes, and they put them up for sale. Here at r, &R Auction, uh, I apologize, I don't have a date here. I took and I forgot to grab my notes. I apologize, but uh, one sold for $6,250. Uh, they are collectible, but you do need to have them authenticated. So, and, and just don't be getting these off of eBay without some ground out great research being done and make certain that you have an authentic one okay i'd like to thank bert from future phone cards at aol.com he sent me a photograph of a neutron irradiated sorry i have a problem with that word uh mark read on i do have some but he sent me a picture i said you know what i'm gonna use that so thank you bert for the photograph i really appreciate it uh this is from the american museum of american Museum of Atomic Energy, and the museum is at the Hanford, or is in Hanford, Washington. Uh, you can find these. There are quite a few of them out there, folks. Um, they're neat. I mean, they are neat. Uh, they're not going to hurt you. Don't worry. You're not going to get no radiation poisoning or not like that. They were, they were very, very minimal. Okay, so there you go. I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so in conclusion, guys, the U.S. Mercury Dime series stands as a testament to the intersection of art, history, and newsmatics. From its captivating design to its enduring legacy, each coin tells the story of American journey through the tumultuous 20th century. As collectors and enthusiasts continue to appreciate its beauty and historical significance, the Mercury Dime remains an enduring symbol of Americans' newsmatic heritage. A timeless reminder of a bygone era preserved in silver. Now, uh, the death of President Franklin Roosevelt in April of 45 brought an immediate call for the coin to be issued with his image. As Roosevelt had been closely associated with the March of Dimes, and as the dime design could be replaced without the need for congressional action, as it had been struck for more than 25 years, the Treasury closed the de uh, denomination to honor Roosevelt. The Mint Chief Engraver, John R. Chinook, Morgan's successor, executed the design features. Roosevelt, which replaced the Mercury Dime in 46, making 1945 the last year of which it was produced. According to the Mint Director, Nellie Ross, a total of 
2,677,232,488 mercury dimes were struck in total. And folks, that concludes my rendition of the Mercury Dime series. So, there you go. If you have any questions, feel free to ask away. Hi, Nick. Hi. Hey, Nick. Hi there. Are you, Nick? <clears throat> Great presentation, Robert. Thank you. I do Very have well a question done. for you, Rob. Thank you. You're good. Any questions, I'm, I'll try and answer them. I know Brad's just fishing with one, but <laughs> back to the uh, the model that they use. I I've read about the uh, L.C. Stevens, but also read that there was another theory from a sculpture of a goddess Bologna uh, that was designed by Albert done by Albert Randolph Ross. Have you read that? Uh, well. What I referenced was through the biography, and right. I will take that because I don't, you know, I don't know what reference the other person used. I do know that not only did I get that reference from Wikipedia, but also David Lang, and I believe it's even noted in Walter Breen's book. I did some research on that because I wanted because it is a little more. But to locate that information and then to, I try to back everything up with conferring um, information from different resources. Um, I would have to say that I believe the daughter when she said that she was the model. That makes sense to me from yeah. everything I've read. Cool. Yeah, I've read that as well. And Brad, I think you have a couple ir irradiated dimes. Ir irradiated. Irradiated. I apologize. Yeah. There That's you go. All right. Now you can see, guys, one of them is a Mercury and one is a Roosevelt. They did any dime for a while there. Yeah. There. Get the camera right. There you go. Yep. That one's beautiful. Those are just a couple that I had sitting on the desk. Yep. Very cool. Yeah, I've had several of those. Those are neat. Those are real. So, neat. Robert, the only the only question I have for you on the presentation is, um, I got distracted. Can you repeat that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, they have what's called replay. Just take it after we're done. Just go back and watch it again. You can watch it anytime you want. <laughs> uh oh, uh, Ronald Harris just asked, "How much are the dimes?" I'll tell you what, Ronald. If you want them. I will sell them to you for $25 for the pair postpaid. Just put in there that you want them and then we'll get your address and send them out. If that's, if, if you want them at that. I can take and Brad, if you tomorrow, bring them, give them to four. We can get well, it. Well, Ronald hasn't said he wants them yet. If he wants them, I agree. But if he wants them, I have the information. Already. All right. That's great. Thank you. So, yeah, Ronald, if you want him, be I in it, baby. You know how it works. <laughs> oh, Amanda yeah. McCarthy yeah. says deal. Well, just a second. Ronald asked first, Amanda. So you're you're on you're on deck. You're second, Amanda. Okay, guys. Don't forget, go to last uh to the podcast we had last week in the comment. Type in Bell because we're gonna be giving away a bell that Mr. Bell himself, Joe Durbin, made. Okay, uh, Ronald yeah. just Ronald just said he'd take them. There you go. Thank you. Okay, Ronald said Ben, he's gonna take it. There you go. Oh, it's a beautiful bell go. I'll tell you what, you don't realize how much I was sitting there and I just mm -hmm. wanted to go in and type in bell, but it's like ah, I know I'm not allowed to, but a <laughs> beautiful bell. Go. That's me. I wanted to too, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you guys beautiful go. Bell. So yeah, guys, go to the last week, last week's podcast, type in bell. That's all you gotta do. Hit enter. As long as you got Bell in there, it'll pick up when we do. We're going to take it at 4 o'clock. We're going to take and we will pull a name that has said Bell in the last podcast. And you will take and you'll be entered if you all you got to do is have Bell in the comment section. Okay. <coughs> oh, let me show you what I am going to take in for next week's podcast. Uh, from the presentation I did, everybody. I'm going to give away 
This Ooh. is one ounce of silver. Nice. Now, it's not the real McCoy, guys, but I wanted to do this one because it gives you everything you want to know. One, it's silver. Two, beautiful split bands. But it's a nice re uh, rendition of the Mercury Dime. Um, yeah, there it is. So that will be, and by the way, to win that one after this podcast, all you have to type in, you're going to have to type in Dime FBL. That's what you'll have to type in the current section. Dime FBL. So, there you go. Uh, Very nice. I took it and I had that in my collection. I just loved it. I seen it one day. I probably paid a whole bunch more for it than I should have, but I think silver was like $8 at the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good, that's a good look. Wow. Oh, yeah, I wish I had another one, but welcome wow. to Heart of Silver and Gold. Wow. Robert, Robert, look yes, down there. Well, Nick, and I agree, Nick and I agree on something. <laughs> What are you agreeing on? Let's see here. I always wanted the Yankees to lose. Oh. <laughs> okay. Anybody have a question? Ask it now on the Mercury Dimes. I'd I do. You said during the presentation, Brad was being Brad. So I was curious, how is Brad being? Right there he is. Ask him. I'll let him in. Oh, no. He was polite and quiet. And oh, oh, he's the opposite. <laughs> yeah. of I, I, I muted myself so that when I was yelling about what he was talking about, nobody could hear me. Oh, okay. He knew Actually, that. I, I, just, I have to be nice. I, you know, I just got my car yesterday. What did you get? A car. Is, is that hard for somebody from Maine to understand? Well, I mean, usually when you say a car, <laughs> you can tell um, what make and model it is. Did you get a new one? It is mine as well, the 2016 W. That's why I included it. I don't it. know if I want to share that. You got a BMW, People Mercedes. Might... I wouldn't share it because somebody's I'm taking not like you and come over and, and key you. You got <laughs> Land Rover. <laughs> no. Oh yeah, I bought a Beetle bus bus with uh with flowers on the side, and uh, there's a a Great Dane in the back. They took you for a ride then in your own car. <laughs> I gave them a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. But see, the the real trouble is, is Nick didn't even know what I was talking about. Well, I asked, and I got a smart answer. <laughs> well, that's better than a dumb answer. I I got a Lexus. Is that okay? Yes, that's <laughs> very nice. Okay, thank you. I I um I went and and got it for myself for my birthday. Thank you. Oh well, happy birthday! Not yet. Well, <laughs> stop pushing things. But anyway, thank you. Welcome. Um. What else do we have here? More coin questions, please. Either that or we're going to have to start talking about the Yankees. Okay, checkers. Um, Somebody a bought a challenger. Question. That sounds cool. Yeah, Did but ice skating me? during you winter. You want to let there. me answer the question there, Brad? Yeah, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Why is the Cherry Pickers guy? Fifth edition, volume one, selling for north of $200. I can tell you it's because it's out of print and because so many people want it, so many people are learning about the Cherry Pickers Guide. You're all fine. All of them are tough to get. There you go, Nick. She's got a cherry. That's the sixth edition, volume two. Nick? Great. Is it sixth edition, volume two? Uh, it's the new one. It's the uh, sixth edition, volume two, yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's the one that's got my discovery in it. Yes. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> I always have it right here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah, great. But that's the reason, sure. checkers, is because the, the cherry pickers guys are like any of the, they are becoming very, uh, everyone wants them, uh, and they're becoming collectible, just like the Red Book and every other book out there. So, well, not every other book, but the Red Book and the cherry pickers. Cherry pickers probably, I don't know. 
I don't know how many. I mean, there's a lot of books that go out of print, and they become pretty valuable. Uh, a lot of them are like coins. They they do take and uh, they go up in value. So, yes, sir. Uh, Brad's probably going to go get one. Uh-huh. No, I was looking. I don't have the one here that I was thinking about. We'll have to do that one from uh, when we do uh, the library talk from downtown. We'll have to feature there that. There you one. go. Yeah, I definitely want to do that, guys. You are going to be impressed. I'm certain. I mean, when I met Brad downtown, seeing his library, and then I got, well, I worked on his private residence and I did some work there and I got to see some of his library. And Oh, uh, Robert, the, the toilet is backed up again. Can you come back and. <laughs> hey, you know, I mean, prices of plumbing went up. Just saying. <laughs> Now, I did see his library. I went on his website, and I looked, and I saw the Mr. Rogers picture next to the library of him holding up a book. The Mr. Rogers picture. How nice. Yeah. Are you surprised I know who that is? So in his red sweater. We need to update yes. that photo. I have a stalker now. Well, I did that for a reason. Yes. To get your, because Annie Sheckman wanted to know who was on the panel. Oh. So I went and did some research and gave him a little of what you've done. And I mean, I really had to copy and paste because it's been a lot. Oh, yeah. Well, when you're as old as I am, you have plenty of time to do a lot of things. (laughs) Well, it was very accomplished. As well as I put Robert's stuff and everybody's stuff in, so. (laughs) Yeah, but when you put in Robert, you know, you just get a picture with a number across the chest. Oh, that's. <laughs> um, Angela Hayes, you got to give us a denomination, a 1970s. Uh, that would be a cent, a cent, Robert. Could be, but they also have quarters um, that were doubled. Let's so. bet on this one. I'm going to bet a cent. Oh, I'll bet it's a cent too, but still, oh. I want to be totally accurate and I don't want to give false information. Well, she oh, says a half dollar. So, how do you like that? Oh, Brad was wrong. I'm going to mark yep. this day. Uh, that's okay. So, I owe Robert a cent now. <laughs> he didn't say it. Okay. I want that 1955 MS62 cent that's downtown. <laughs> Fat chance, baby. Yeah, I know. Um, okay, yeah, the half dollar. There are, I do know the 1970s half dollar double diovers. Uh, I don't know exactly how many there are. I do know of one that's a really nice one, Angela. Um, and I got mine slabbed and graded. I believe it was worth it for the price increase because it's in the cherry picker's guide. So if it's the cherry picker's guide, um, Example, in other words, if it's that double die, then yes. Uh, if it's one of the more minor ones, then you have to reconsider. So, if you send me a photograph to errors to you at AOL.com, uh, if somebody would put that in the chat for me, Angela, I would be happy to let you know if it is a cherry pickers variety and if you should get it slabbed or not. Tell us the story about the aluminum scent. Well, that's no, it's your be- aluminum scent. Not the, your aluminum scent. I didn't know you had one. Um, well, actually, I do. But that's something that we won't talk about much. I want to <laughs> see that. I want to see that. <laughs> well, of all the really cool numismatic things, that's one thing I've not been able to hold and look at. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Well, no, I get it. I mean, yeah, that's going to be that'll, I mean, that'll rank right up there with a bag of wheat cents or, a, you know, a roll of silver dollars or whatever. Amanda McCarthy, I'll just tell you this much about the 1974 Denver aluminum cent. That's the only one that would be genuine. I can tell you right now, there's only one permitted to be owned in the entire country. And that was one that was given to a mint director at Denver from the superintendent of the mint. I believe it was uh, Brad, if you, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but 
I believe it was the superintendent of the men gave it to the uh, Denver men guy that was retiring. He in turn gave it to his son, or he got it through uh, inheritance. And they seized it for a moment. He proved that it was an inheritance and proved that it was given to him legally. So it was able to be slabbed, um, and there's only one known to exist. So there's only one allowed to be owned. If you have one, Secret Service going to go, and you're going to lose it real quick. So there's your story, Amanda McCarthy. I hope that's what you need to know. Oh. <laughs> okay, Amanda, you're trying to get me in. You're trying to get me to get a knock on the door, honey. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I don't have any original aluminum scents. I do have some that people have tried to counterfeit. Just so you know, Amanda, it is not legitimate. Um, <laughs> I know the difference, and oh, I'd love to own a real one, but I do not own one that is real. Sorry, that's just the truth of it, and I don't need somebody knocking on my door. So, there you go. Now that's the truth right there. I promise you. Hey guys, uh, I hate to cut and run, but I've got a doctor's appointment I got to get to. So y'all have a great afternoon. Good Hope luck. It goes with well. Away, and we'll see you next week. Okay, so, don't forget. Take care, Alden. Godspeed. Alden, don't forget. Bring those questions to Brad about the bus theories. I'm working bring on hard, it. Bring it heavy, because that boy knows a lot of shit. I want, to, I want somebody to stump him. And that's for everybody out there, too. Get together with bust for a bus series coinage. Brad's going to be answering questions from Alden. And Alden's got to try and stump him. And you guys bring up some questions for him. That'll be coming up. I'm not sure when we're doing that. Do you know, Brad? Oh, hey, Alden, God's feeding my friend. Love you. You take care. And well, good stuff. Good stuff. Good. I hope you give you a bunch of good information. Oh, hope it goes God's well. Speed, good luck, Alden. Thank you. Yep. Oh, okay. okay, there we go, guys. Uh oh. Brad's working his butt off. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Four Doc says hi. Four Doc says hi. Doc is a, he is an actual doctor. Uh, him and Four get along great. They're both foreigners and they both look through porn. <laughs> It's almost like they, I mean, I don't, I don't know if he's a real doctor or not, but you know, I haven't seen the license. So he, you know, I think, I think, he's, he's, actually, I think he's actually a vet and he, he just works in the hospital. And uh, <laughs> you should well, tell him you're, you've been off your meds for a while. Well, that's probably the best doctor out there, man. <laughs> we need to get Brad back on his meds. <laughs> okay, hey, hi, hi, some good meds. They want me on meds. David Bradley said, hey, everyone, should I stack 10-ounce bars or 10-ounce rounds? I plan on keeping them for a long time. I assume you're referring to silver. Now, Brad, do you want to bet on that one? Because it could be platinum, um, could be gold. I'll take that. Uh, rhodium, rhodium, 10-ounce rhodium bars. Okay, could be rhodium. Uh, if you want to specify, Bradley, that's fine. But if it's silver, uh, you know... Yeah, he says silver. I win again, baby. That's good to win, baby. You're slacking, baby. You're slacking. Hey, I know what I want to bet the next time. It's right next to you, off to your left. <laughs> uh huh. Oh, you. you want a whole? Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't think you can show that, Brad. Uh, yes, I can. If I cover up part of it. Part of it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, loser. <laughs> Oh my gosh! He won that from me, and what's right underneath it is—it's an adjective. No, <laughs> duck. Yeah, there you go, it's duck. <laughs> and, but he won that, and he's kept it on his wall, which is like, okay, that's fine. I have a—I have a couple of more up there. I've won from other people that I, you know, remind them of every now and then. Okay, well, let's get back to David Bradley's question. Should he take, and do you think he should be collecting bars or rounds? It doesn't matter. 10 ounces is 10 ounces. Personally, I prefer one ounce pieces because that makes them more liquid. You can use smaller, smaller uh, denominations of it. But 
Um, to us, it doesn't matter if it's a round or a bar. It's 10 times whatever uh, the market is bearing at the time. Yeah, when I take in any time, I'd like the one inch round or, well, don't matter, just a one ounce round bars. I don't care what it is. Um, I do have a couple of decorative bars that I've gotten throughout the years. Um, and honestly, guys, you know, push comes to shove. I got some Joe Durbin Bells, baby, that That's pure right. silver. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like some guys like, yeah, Jay, you, you're never going to be in trouble with all those that bell material you've got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I I tend to agree with Brad, though. The one ounce is where I like going. I mean, you can always get the tubes. I don't have one with me, but... Uh, I like the one ounce, too. Yeah, you can get them in tubes like this, guys, okay? Yeah. And, and it's real simple to just put it away. Uh, that holds 20 ounces, so, you know, and it's one ounce at a time. It's easier, in my personal opinion, it's easier to take, you know, if you have an emergency, and if you only have a 1,000-ounce bar, which they make them, I've seen them, they're wonderful, and they're great doorstop, but yep. the real silver worth a ton of money. But if you got to sell, you got to sell the whole 1,000 ounce, whereas if you have one ounce, hey, and you, let's say you only need three or four ounces to pay that bill. Well, you got three or four ounces. And I'm just going by the fact that everybody's talking about how silver's getting ready to go to the moon. What do you think about Not that? Oh, how are you <laughs> hey, good, Nick. Joe. Oh, the, Master, the Masters Gold Tournament is on. Okay, Nick, Joe, Brad, and myself. Yep. Here we go. A determination. The end of the year. I am talking December, the last day in December of 2020. What is it? Yeah, 2024. What do you think the price of gold's going to be? I will start out. I think it's going to be 2650 That is my number. I know Brad's number, so Brad, go ahead. Make no, you don't, know my, you don't know my number. Let's get Joe's. Okay. I think, uh, oh, 2820. 2820 <laughs> that's, that's very specific. That's right. Oh yeah, that's why I said 2650. I yeah, I agree. Now is this is this like um it's a sore loser um, bet. The, the price is right, you can't go over. So mm -hmm. in that case, to be the closest without no, 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 going no. over 2651. I, I don't care if you go over or not, it's the closest. Oh, Nick, think, what do you think? I uh, say 25. 100. Nick says 25. Nick's out. You're out. No, nope. I bet I'll win. Amy, well, I'll win. I we'll will find win. out, guys. We're going to find out because I'm going to I'm going to give you a real number. I'm going to give okay. you a real number. I'm going to say $2,573.55. How much? Less. $2,573. And fifty-five cents. Okay. <laughs> Close to my number, but the last time I checked, all of us had real numbers. Yeah, I do. Real numbers <laughs> are. I don't. Think I'm not adding the cents. I don't give it up cents. I mean, uh, that's for the gold. Uh, I mean, anybody want to try on silver? Yeah. What's the winner get? Yeah, we changed that. For we need to get, hey, we need to get JB and Alden together. Bragging rights. Okay, well, Amanda, they say bragging right. I'm going to say we have taken everybody out of put up something, but that's okay. We can do bragging nights. <sighs> I put up with you, don't I? <laughs> hey, Mac. Go for, it. Go for it. Okay, guys, we have a poll on the gold, and that's from everybody's number. So pick out what you think the numbers are going to be. Who did the 2820? Me. Yeah. Oh. He was very specific. Okay, that was Joe. Okay. That's right. Very specific. Cool. Do you we'll know who it. I hope is right? Joe. Well, no. I hope somebody above Joe's right. <laughs> <There> well, <laughs> that's fine with me. Yeah, guys, take the uh take the poll, see what which one you guys think. 
But silver, now, you know, that's a different story, guys. Now, I'll I tell mean, you what. I'm going by the pole. I'm winning. Okay, well, well, let's let it finish. That's fine. That's, you go for it, hon. I don't, you know, that's the whole idea of my poll. Let's find out who has it. Robert. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I think, guys, that uh, I gave that number because I really think it's going to be close. Now, I've not heard what, like, Andy Sheckman or any of those other silver gurus have said. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that Andy says that I'm like, oh, my sh I mean, that guy does so much damn research. It's mind boggling. Um, but a lot of you know, selling great. too. He's got a business. He's selling his business as well when he's giving you these facts. Well, right. You know, that's just like Brad. A lot of people don't realize. Did, 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 did you just say facts? Facts. Well, I mean, it's depending opinions, on opinions. Opinions. I would say opinions because yeah, I'm trying to be. I don't always agree. We'll just say. Well, do there's a lot I don't. Hmm? Do you agree with anyone? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> when and where? Just check. <laughs> it it's happened. It's happened once in the past. It's happened once. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, guys, don't forget. Do me a favor. Jump over to the poll and put oh, yeah. in your opinion of how much you think silver is. Oh, yeah, that's another thing. Thank you, Joe. Three so minutes. That's right. You got three minutes, guys, to go to the last podcast from last week and type in Bell. That's all you do. Just type in Bell in the comment section from last week's podcast, and you will be entered to win that silver bell right there that Joe Durbin is holding. So there you go. Do that and do anything, guys. Go over wherever it is and hit that poll. Put your guess in. What? How much do you think gold will be at the end of 2024? There you go. You got a, You got something you're thinking about there, Brad? You look like you're an alien thinking real hard. Well, I don't know. Bigfoot, Silver, Hide and Seeker just said when the lizard people come and confiscate the gold, silver <laughs> will be $2,000 an ounce. And I was just thinking about the lizard people. Oh, I was thinking, I don't think they're going to confiscate gold. Have you ever seen a lizard person? No, I haven't seen one of those either. I have. Oh, Huh. I have back when okay. we used to have a store in the back when we used to have a store in the mall. Oh, I bet you used to have a shit ton of lizard people. At oh, there, oh, was, there was there was a there was a person who came in that had their whole head tattooed, including their ear, their eyelids, and we called him the lizard man. And one day he came in and had a small child, and it's like you go to the PTA meeting and you go, uh, "Hi, teacher, this is my dad, lizard man." I I, I don't <laughs> we. So anyway, that was just a that was just a flashback for me. I'm sorry. I don't see many of those type of tattoos up here in my state. <laughs> it's too cold for the lizard people, I suppose. That's right. Come on, folks. We got 46 people in the room. Get to the poll. Give us your opinion. Let's get everybody to give an opinion. Find out what you think about the price of gold for the year 2024. Where it's going to end at. Okay. Let's see. Any at one have a oh, question? Tiger, about Tiger Stacker just asked if Joe still makes bells. Yes, sure yes, do. yes. yes sir. Tell them, Joe. Tell them. Oh, yeah. Pretty much. I certainly do. You can win this Show that bell, Joe. There you go. There's one of his beautiful bells. And what? And Joe, what's the price range on those bells? Low to high, approximately. From $35 up. There you go. Guys, not only are you getting a bell, you're getting a piece of history. I'll tell you what, Joe Durbin, I mean, he's known around the corn community about as much as Florida Lena is for her packaging. <laughs> I just put um, Joe's uh, email in the chat, so if somebody wants to email him about the bells, they can. Thank, Thank you, Nick. Nick. Thank you, guys, for the kind words. Mac. Well, Diane's cabin said he makes bells sun up to sundown. So what did you do during the eclipse? <laughs> you made what? We made bells. Oh, oh. Made bells. <laughs> okay, guys, here we go. We're going to do a pick to find out who the winner is of the bell from last week. If you haven't gotten over there and put your name in, sorry about your luck. 
But what we're going to do is one person, only one, will take and win. So, let's find out who it is. Oh, my goodness. Cherie! Sherry Ward! Yay. Congratulations, Congrats. Cherie. I know, Cherie, she's been down to the uh, Sharonville Convention Center at the show there. Hey, it wasn't DLC, by the way. <laughs> Congratulations, Cherie Ward. Yeah, Thank congratulations, you. Sherry. Beautiful. I was going to say, Joe, I know you don't need none of her information. You guys probably have it all. Oh, yeah. We got it. Yeah, that's what I figured. Congratulations, Sherry. I appreciate it. I'm glad to see that. One of the coin community people that we all love. So. I don't know, Nick, if you've ever met Sheree. She's a Sherry Ward. Uh, Not in person, but of course, I've conversated with her in the chats and, and privately through email. Okay. Very nice person. Yeah. Yeah, she is. She's real sweet. Her uh, Who was, who was, well, pizza guy. Yeah. Yep. So. There we go. Okay, guys. And don't forget, for this week, at the end of the show, right there, you're going to put in Dime FBL if you want to take and if you want to win. This Mercury Dime is the silver one ounce. The rendition of Mercury Dime for the presentation that I did today. And it's got full bell lines. So there you go. That's what will be given away for this podcast. So after the podcast is over, go down in the chat and type in Dime FBL. And you will be registered to win that one ounce silver uh, rendition of the Mercury Dime. So there you go. Very nice. Good luck, everybody, on that. Did you yeah. see what your wife just put in there, Robert? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Yes, it does. That's exactly what it means. We've heard that a few times, huh, Robert? <laughs> There's no conceit in this house. Floor's got it all, baby. Excuse me. <laughs> so there you go. Again, you guys, if you have any questions about coins, let us know now. Uh, just so you guys know, uh, we'll answer any questions we can. So, so are yeah, we going to guess on just, silver? Somebody price just at the end of the year. Yeah. Okay. What? Well, we can I, do that. But let's go back to the gold, okay? Joe Doberman, you had the most people that agreed with you. It's going to be twenty-eight twenty with forty-two percent. Uh, twenty-one percent said uh, twenty-six fifty, and twenty-one percent said twenty-five hundred. And only 15% said $2,573.55. <laughs> so, now, if you guys want to take and do it on silver, I don't mind. I'm going to take it. I'll be happy to start it. And I'll tell you what, guys. I'm going to say silver is going to be $38.32. That's what I think it's going to be at the end of the year. Okay, who wants to go next? On I'll silver? be in for thirty-three, thirty-three. No. Okay, no Brad says thirty-three, thirty-three. Nick, what do you say? I want to say twenty-seven. Whoa, twenty-seven. What do you mean? It's already over twenty-seven. Uh, Nick's looking for a, a dip. I just don't think it's going to stay at. I mean, it's gotten to twenty-seven, twenty-eight. I mean, and it went right back down. <laughs> right. Okay, well, I think it's going to go up. What do you think, Joe? I think thirty-four. Even thirty four fifty, thirty four fifty. Okay. Hey, somebody grab John Jacobs' uh, uh, question that came in a few minutes ago one at second. four oh four. I see it. Are you talking that one? What's uh, the that's one? the one I'm talking about. Oh. Okay. okay. All right. So Robert, Robert, yeah. tell tell them about machine doubling. Oh. Okay. Go Hold back on, to Robert. Man. Robert's going to talk about machine doubling. Okay, guys. Uh, yeah, Brad, you know, I, I know the difference between the long acre and machining. However, machine doubling, the difference, what happens with the machine doubling? Something in the machine of the coining press gets loose. Um, I tell the story all the time that Arnie Margolis told me a story that when he discussed it with the machine worker at the mint, 
when that occurs and he sees the um the looseness of the machine where a machine will take it'll give you the appearance of steps everything will look like it's almost cut off um the machine said as soon as he sees something like that he will grab all his tools and he tightens everything up because something's loose so that is just chatter there's some kind of chatter in the die chamber and it's it, the dies are moving that is machine doubling that's not a true double die now take it to brad and brad can tell you the difference on long acre i want to see if he's correct uh -oh. go for it yeah because i do know the story of that well, I understand it to be uh, when they were punching into the working die that they sank the um, the device a little too deeply, and the neck of the um, oh, um, sorry, I can't come up with the name. Uh, the the punch, the neck of the punch was pushed into the uh, the die face, and that caused the uh, the doubling around it. So, Robert, how did I do? I want that bill back. <laughs> uh oh. That's how bad it was. Okay, guys, here's the story that I was told about the long acre and what happens with the long acre. Okay. The long acre is actually one of the directors of the mint in the United States Mint back in the 1800s. He took, and for lack of a better terminology, he was a cheapskate, literally. He was a cheapskate. What would he do? He would go in and he would try to touch up the dies himself instead of making new dies to him that was too expensive. So he would just go in with a hand tool and he would basically outline. That's why you see on the uh, long acre, you'll notice that like on the mint, let's say a letter. It's all the way around and it looks doubled all the way around. That, that cannot occur on a true double die. Uh, Brad says he's calling bullshit. Uh, look it up. That's all I got to say. Look it up because I'll bet you mine's right. Well, here again, I'm, now I'll be honest, you know, just like you, Brad, that's what I was told and what I've read about it. Longacre was just a cheapskate when it comes to the United States Mint, and he just touched everything up. Like I say, go look it up. I don't care. Right. They used the crap out of all those dyes. Well, think of the series that the Longacre is on and the time frame that it was happening. Because it was not happening in the entire Indian Head series. I mean, if you look at the time frame that it was occurring, it only that's how they got Longacre double die. <laughs> Because right. he was the guy in charge at the time. So, look it up. That's how it occurred. <laughs> All right. I'll look I'll look forward to your um uh you should have a reference. You should have a book downtown. I'm not certain if Arnold Margolis has it in his book or if any of I, I'm not certain if those books have it. See, he's, he, he's got the books, which is great, guys. I'm going by this right up here. That's it. That's all right. You keep going. I'll, I'll see if uh, I find something. Amanda? Nope. I don't agree, honey. Let him look for it. What's that? You completed it? <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, we ended the poll for silver and $27 is at 35%. 38, 32 is at 32%. 33, 33 is at 23. And 34, 50 is at 8%. So, Nick, you got the highest with the $27. Let's see what happens. Uh, I'm anxious to see. Yeah, well, I tell you what, I'd take it. I'd be willing to throw in something where, on that one because I don't agree that ain't going, it, it's going up. I promise you. Well, I, I think it's going up, but I just don't think it's going to stay. Yep, it will. It, it's got to. And this is what we said and, last year as well. Uh, we said, people said the same thing. It was going to be 30 and over last say year. year. Say it every year. And I have not seen it yet. You know what, Nick? You're right. People do say it. But right now with the inflation, the way it's going and them not doing what they're, what they should be doing, which I agree with. Um, oh, gosh. What's his name? What's the name? Peter Schiff. Schiff? I agree with him. 
Right now, we should be like it was back in the 70s. Interest should be up in the 20s. It should be, sure. But they're not going to do that with a presidential election coming up. They're going to make our dollar look stronger, and that's what's going to keep it under 30. Google agrees 90% with Lawson. And I have a feeling that happens to do with the uh, Longacre, I believe. Is that correct, Robert Pentoff? Bigfoot hide and seek, you might be right. If gas is ten dollars um at the end of the year, I'll I won't I'll be walking. Three percent on the car. Okay. Well, you know what? That's why. Uh yes, the long acre. Thank you, Robert Pentoff. Uh 90%, I'll take that. I may not have been one hundred percent correct, but I mean my understanding from what I read, it's been a while ago. Is on Longacre, like I said, he was just a cheapskate. Well, that might be why they're not agreeing. They don't, they're taking ten percent away from me, Longacre, uh, Robert Pentoff, because I'm calling him a cheapskate. <laughs> it's politically incorrect. What can I say? <laughs> Brad's digging deep, looking for the answer. Uh huh. Exactly. <laughs> yep. That's fine. I just it may be next week, but you know. That's all right. We got time. We have nothing but time. Mm -hmm. We just sit around and wait for the price of gold and silver to go up so high that we'll melt all of our liberty seated in coins. There you go. I don't know. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be hard. I would never. First off, if anything ever, if the gold and silver, right now thirty seven. I'm sorry, twenty three seventy two ten is gold. Twenty-eight thirty-three is silver. I think it's going to go up, Nick. You're going to be very surprised. I hope I am. I really do. But I mean, I just don't foresee it staying this high right now. It's going to come back down. Well, the the problem, and I mean, Andy Sheckman, uh, like I said, Peter Schiff, all of them, they discussed it. There is, a, I hate to put it this way. But I think Peter Schiff said it on, um, on uh, what? PB, the podcast, Pat D Bet Davis, PB, PBS uh, podcast said it yesterday. The people that are in Congress right now when it comes to money, they are flipping clueless. I promise you, Nick, you know more than probably the most intelligent person at the flipping mint or at the federal government right now when it comes to money. And that's all you have to realize is that fiat currency is paper. Guys, real money is gold and silver. Yes, but again, they don't view it as such. Right. But right? see, here's what a lot of people don't realize. And, and here's an education, everybody. Back in about 800 AD, China had an economy that was so bad, they had these coin trees. That's where you get the coin. They call it a coin cash or something. It was made of they, they literally made them on trees, and they made them by the gazillion. They were worthless. The people in Taiwan, they took and they had betting houses. They were using ceramic tokens right. to bet with. Yeah. And back in from six to eight hundred AD, they were using those out in the market because they were worth more than the Chinese money was. So money is whatever you and I agree upon. It's just like barter is what it boils down to. Like Joe Durbin, if he agrees to take my fiat currency for a bell, it's a deal. We both have no problem. If he says, "Hey Robert, I want one ounce of silver for a bell." And we agree to that. That's money at that time. If he says, hey, Robert, I want a dozen eggs for that bell. Guess what? That is money at that time. But we have to remember what came out today and what is affecting the gold and silver price. And that's a CPI report. CPI? Go ahead. Yeah, the CPI report was out today. So that's going to affect the prices because we learned that what? Inflation is 4.5% higher than what they expected. See, that's what I'm saying. CP lie. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't yeah, know that. Gotcha. And every, that's true I, because it, it's true because they're not there. There's a lot of things that they're not factoring in on their, that report, but that's what people are looking at. What was you saying, Joe? I'm sorry. I said, but a report comes out every month, every, every quarter, every, you know, it's like, yeah, uses for the same old, same old. And it gets revived about a month later with some true information that says that the first report was full of shit. So there you go. The marvelous thing is says gold currently at twenty three ninety one. It'll I've got it at twenty three seventy one. That might be a typo. I'm okay, looking uh, at it right now. Two three seven one. The marvelous, whoever you're looking at, wherever you're getting your numbers from, I'm looking at twenty three seventy one ten myself right now. Twenty three seventy one thirty. I got. Uh, I got. Okay. There you go, but that's okay. It may still make weight. Well, silver or gold's up 3780 right now today. So if it does that again tomorrow, we'll be 2400. So we're yeah. keeping an eye on it. Oh, yeah. Now, the, re the real question in all of this is when is fiat currency going to be better than owning the gold and silver? When is what now? When is the fiat currency going to be better than owning the gold and silver? Nothing stays king forever. Okay, well, I don't know if you're saying that backwards or if you're saying that on purpose, but I'll tell you right now. Um, I tend to agree with Amanda. It ain't going to ever happen. Right now, I would much, much more prefer to have gold or silver than I would fiat currency. Right, right now, every day you own fiat currency, it's starting to become the same uh, deal it was in Germany back in the after World War One. I. I mean, every time I go to the flipping food store, it costs more money. And Pretty that's true. Have to take a wheelbarrow to the damn food store to get a loaf of bread. And that's true, but they're not taking gold and silver when I go to the grocery store or when I buy gas. They're still taking fiat currency. So you know. Okay, so. Much what let's Ronald Harris just put up at 417. Never gold and silver will always win. Okay, then tell me why in 2012 I traded gold and silver for fiat currency. And fiat currency now today will buy me more silver and gold than what I sold. Isn't 2012 when the gold and silver price were really high and came right back it down? It did. It went like, really high and went then really went high. down. Yep. Then crashed and now it's coming back. You... But I sold for <laughs> fiat currency in 2012. I invested the money and it earned between 12 and 22% a year where I invested it. So I could buy back more silver and more. gold today than what I sold in 2012. So and I look at that as the fiat currency won for that time period. Right. What about 1980? Did you do the same? Just because I didn't have any gold and silver in 1980. I was like young, like you. I, I was a born. Much. <laughs> right. I was okay. two. <laughs> Shut up. Um, I was very young then and was just starting to get some gold and silver. But uh, so, no, I did not. Uh, the only way that I participated in the great gold rush of 1980 is I worked for somebody else in the coin shop at that time. And the fact that they made so much money in 1980 allowed them to retire. And oh, wow. that, that allowed me to buy into the coin shop as a young man. Oh, so well, that there you was, go. that was my, I have plenty of stories from 1980 about things that went on. Were you behind the scenes, that? in front of the scenes, <laughs> or whatever. I mean, it was there was an incredible amount of money floating just around. just floating around in the stratosphere at that time. A lot of disposable income. Of course, I was too, so I read about it. <laughs> well, you know, bringing across the question in the way that Brad presented it. I understand because what was it? Uh, when was it, Brad? Ninety something, right before you guys shut down Coleraine, 
silver went up and you guys were paying like 24, 25 times face for silver. I don't remember the year, but I remember I had taken in for a lifetime. I'd been going to the banks and asking for the half dollar rolls, getting all the 90, all the 40 out. And I did this a lot. And when it got to 24 times faith that Coins Plus was paying, I went there and I think I cashed in in face somewhere in the neighborhood of $400 face. Now, I did it in two different loads, but still. It was about $400 face, so I did exactly what Brad's saying, and then I waited for silver and gold to go back down, and I bought back into it, and so I understand what he's talking about that. That's just like buying a stock. You don't want to hold a stock forever. You want to take, when it jumps up and you take profit, get your profit and well, let it go. Stocks, there's some stocks it's good to keep and hold for a long time. For example, drip stock, you know, dividend stocks and like Exxon. I got Exxon right now. It's, it's gone up to $122 a share right now. Okay. You're talking about a stock that has to do with uh, commodities. Yeah. I tend to agree. Commodities tend to hold their, you know, that's like your gold and silver, but still, even though they go up and down, I'm not a professional stock investor, so I cannot talk a whole lot on it. I do know there's some as you're referring to, but for the majority of your stocks, it's it's a game, in my opinion. And Robert, Robert, Robert made know. a good point, too. The summer travel months, um, gas is going to historically go up. but you And that is true, but usually that's around Memorial Day when you'll start to see the prices rise. So they've, they've gone up a little bit earlier this time, but I'm also reading that it had a lot to do with the travel for the eclipse. People were traveling quite a bit to get to right. places where they could see it better. How far yeah, did you have to travel, Nick? Actually, we saw it really good at our, my state, and uh, and we didn't really have to travel anywhere. But there was a lot of people that did travel up to northern Maine to get on the Appalachian Trail. You know, the highest point in on the Appalachian Trail here in Maine. So, that was, I just yeah. walk outside. So, were you in? Were you in totality or or ninety? Yeah, percent? we did. We did get in. Yes, and it got really dark and cold. And for about, about how degrees. about how long was your totality? Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I didn't time it. Okay. I can send you pictures. <laughs> well, I, I have my own pictures. It went right over the top of my house. Really? Went over the top of my house, too. Yes, I understand. How many <laughs> life sacrifices did you have? I heard you had a lot of sacrifices there, Brad. I, do what? I said, how many life sacrifices did you have there? You said you was having life sacrifices about three. No, at two. Two o'clock. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you You missed them. I said how many? That's all I asked. No, I'm, did, you, I'm, did you wear your glasses? Okay, here's the question. Yes, sir. Glasses. There you go. There's a question. Well, what about buying gold from Costco? I I don't know. I don't buy gold from Costco. You buy a paper towel at Costco. Yeah. I have read that people were disappointed in the silver that they were coming damaged and you're not able oh. to return the purchase. So, I mean, I would probably go there for my bread, but not my silver and gold. But right, I, but they good. were happy with the gold purchase. People were happy with the gold purchase, not happy with the silver purchase. So so. They're, they're selling PAMP Gold Bars. And PAMP Gold Bars are a name name brand. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, my only Hi. concern would be what you buy from Costco, they're not going to buy back from you. Right. Okay? So... <laughs> You know, I would like you to go to your local coin shop and. But that logic, though, a lot of times but, when we're purchasing, we're purchasing it from places and sources where probably they won't buy it back from us either. So. That's fine. So. When but, you're done with again, it, you can bring it to me and sell it to me. They were getting of, of um, I think it was Canadian uh, maple leaves, and that was getting, yes, they were getting Canadian maple leaves that had the milk stain. Uh, and they were coming damaged in. Um, you know, had dings in them and scratches. And so when they opened the tubes, they were coming, um, the seal well, the was tube broken. would come open and shipping a lot of times yes. and because the Canadian maple leaf tubes, the lids don't fit. Well. Right. But then again, you're not able to return at Costco either. So if you're not happy with your purchase, you couldn't return them. Like most companies, you know, would do. Yeah. You come into my shop. I put it on the counter. You look at it. You like it. You buy it. You don't like it. You leave it, you know. It's right easy. On. I like to hold stuff before I buy it. I didn't buy my car without taking it for a test. 
I'm sorry, I did. Um, I took I took a car similar to it for a test drive. Thank you, Mac. Well, Mac's getting a good deal from one of the two. There you go, Yoke Van, right on. Hello, Hampton Consultants. Hey, Steve, how you doing? Hey, Yote, Yote Fan has the quote of the day. Put it up there from 425. The quote of the day. There you go, Yote Fan. You're famous, baby. You're famous. <laughs> <laughs> right on there you go yep so uh yeah guys don't forget at the end of the show we're gonna take and you got to go to the comment section okay if you want to take and if you want to win this one ounce silver mercury rendition of silver mercury dime you got to type in Dime FBL. If you want to remember it, as Florida Lena says, it's Dime Florida Barati Lawson. <laughs> so just <laughs> type in Dime FBL and you will be registered to win this one ounce silver rendition of a Mercury Dime. So there you go, guys. I just wanted to remind everybody about that. Very nice. So there you go. Okay, guys. Any more comments? If not, I mean, if we ain't get no comments, we will end this early, guys. So oh, we won't end it early. <laughs> okay. That's like going yeah. home from a. That's like going home from a Red Sox game in the seventh inning. You got to stick around until they lose. <laughs> Did you see that face, Joe? I did. I think you got an eye roll even. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I, I, now, Nick, is, is that eye roll thing typical for blondes? Because my seven-year-old granddaughter is blonde like that, and she has that same eye roll. No, we just, you know, eye roll to stupid comments. So you must... Wow. <laughs> I guess granddaughter. I wonder what granddaughter. She must be a smart that. little girl. Smart little girl. <laughs> she is. Yes, yeah, what I figured. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go O's. Okay. O's. Oh, Oreos. Okay. <laughs> and he must be. It says beat those socks. Must be the white socks he's talking that about. That must be. Must be. <laughs> Yeah, Red Sox I do have to, I do have to congratulate Nick Nick you on your team. They they uh, last week in the um, uh, in the major league uh, rankings they rose the most number of places of any team. Yeah, well, last night they pretty and they're still two places behind the Reds. <laughs> Not surprised they didn't do a good. I mean, they lost last night too. So you know, us Red Sox fans. We had didn't have a well, yeah, you're loser. 86 I... years. We had a curse on us. I mean, come on. Come on. A curse. A curse. Mm -hmm. You know? Gold. Gold, $2,374.10. Silver, $28.32. That is at this precise moment, everybody, from Kitco. I can't wait to see what it is tomorrow. <laughs> the I morning, because I don't I've... think it'll be... I've still got gold and silver that I'll trade for fiat currency. So do I. Just not all of it. Oh, Macario Acosta says we have a Red Sox minor league team in Greenville, South Carolina. They have a minor league team in Boston, too. They have one in Florence as well. Yeah, they do have one in South Carolina. And um, they even go through like the seven... Um, Inning stretch, they'll do the sweet, um, what is it, Caroline song? Sweet Caroline. Do they still have that one over in Who, who sang? Okay, who sang the song, Nick? Neil Diamond. Very good. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Would yes. I win? You, you're batting 150, <laughs> the same as the Boston Red Sox team. Probably they are. <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, 
Brad, if you can go to a go to Fenway, I mean, I mean, to one of the original parks, you have to go. I, you know, I I really would like to someday. My my daughter sent me a picture once from on top of the green monster. Green monster, yes. And I I was I was upset with her. So yeah. my children have a tendency to tease me. So I like uh, your children. Yes, and uh, <laughs> so my daughter sent me a picture from the top of the green monster, and my son sent me a picture once from a small obscure soccer pitch in um in spain when uh he was watching ronaldo play from about the eighth row you were so. just speaking french to me but i i understood spain <laughs> you bask in that light don't you <laughs> wow. nick, nick, nick didn't get it nick didn't no i didn't <laughs> I, it's okay you're too young Oh, oh rice and peanuts okay. and silver cracker and gold. Jacks. I want cracker jacks, baby. <laughs> I just want tickets under a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Yeah, good luck with that now. I know. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. And you can still get into a Reds game for about twenty bucks, I think. Yeah, because who wants to go to a Reds game? Besides oh no, they have a great family uh, play uh, place out in the outfield. Oh, it's great. Yep. That new stadium that the Reds built, I'll tell you what, I've been there. That is, cool. It is. I mean, in stadiums that I've been at, that's a good family stadium, I yeah. think, would be the best I, way to I just, it. I think the Red Sox tickets are a little bit higher because there's not as much as many seats as, you know, these new stadiums that they've built. Fenway's still kind of a – I mean, there's no bad seat in Fenway. It's a very small, intimate park. I can say the same about the Red Stadium. I don't know of any bad seat there. Oh. I it's, mean, it, got, it, got, was, it was one of the newer stadiums that was made like an older stadium. Oh, nice. More intimate. Yeah. Uh, I what does it see? Twenty some thousand, thirty some thousand. I think. I, I, look up. How many, was, how uh, many uh, uh, seats are in the new Red Ballpark? Seats are in the Red Ballpark. Oh, I was told about thirty-five thousand. Oh wow! Yeah, but this, that that's sounds still, right. not that's still not big because you think about these uh, football stadiums that carry sixty thousand people. Right. Uh, okay, hey guys, it says here seating capacity is forty two thousand two hundred and seventy one. Oh, there you go. Forty two two seventy one for. Thank for, you. Yeah, uh, Doug Wagner had it. Ohio okay. rules. Yeah. yeah, Doug Wagner had it in there. You're Got right. There. There. Oh, Doug Wagner. Hey, Doug, are you um are you related to Dick Wagner, the old general manager of the Reds? Oh, I thought you were gonna say for a soccer team again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm talking about an obscure sport now, baseball. Oh, John Jacobs. He saw uh Connie Mack behind steel beams. Okay. <laughs> Now, see, you have to go back to uh, Crosley Field, and Crosley Whoa. Field was a unique baseball park. You know how everybody has a warning track now, Nick? Mm -hmm. You understand what that's for? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, at Crosley Field, instead of a warning track, they had a terrace. A terrace is basically a hill, and when visiting teams would come in, and the first time a new outfielder would try to back up the terrace, what would happen? They fall down flat on his butt and the ball would fall in and we'd get a hit. Yeah. We have people neatest. that crash into the green monster quite a bit. They don't know how to play off the green monster. Oh, talk to people in, uh, in Chicago about crashing into the wall. So there's only two original parks left and Fenway's one of them. What is the second one? Isn't it Wrigley? Yeah. Uh, uh. And I don't think they're quite original. What did he win? Our <laughs> undying <laughs> love. And they are original to the Red Sox because Fenway was the first time the Red Sox played as the Red oh. Sox because they used to Doug, be the Boston Braves. And Doug the Braves, Wag Shut up a second. And No, Braves <laughs> played on Boston College Field. So there, so I stumped you. <laughs> Doug Wagoner says he misses Riverfront Stadium, though. I don't. I don't. I've been to both of them. You know what? It was 
it was the, you know, everybody said, oh, look at this great modern stadium. Yes, we put AstroTurf in that was so hard it tore up everybody's knees. And uh, I have to go back and say, the only thing I miss about Riverfront Stadium was the team that played there. What's what's Dogmen? What's what? Um, dog men. Shiny Shiny Men said, I heard from the military intel sources that there's dog men in northern Maine. I don't know what dog men are. Oh, they're they're like lizard people, I think. Yeah, I think that's oh. what it is. Yeah. Um, and I believe it's primarily up around Michigan, I thought, but I could be mistaken. I've that. never heard of any I've never heard that. Does that mean they're bad guys? Oh, terrible! Yeah, oh. you keep talking about really? the Red Sox. Do you remember? They're the they're a meaner they're a meaner sort of Bigfoot. Yes, like oh. a Yeti, but uglier. Right. Yep. Yeah. No, if you say if you say like a Yeti to Nick, she thinks it's a a, a a drink holder. No, I know what that is, and we do have Bigfoot. He's living in my woods right now. Mm hmm. Okay, Nick. My question to you: You talk about the Red Sox a lot. Do you remember the red stockings? Oh my. Red stockings. No. Yeah. That's that's who the Reds were at one time. Oh, the, oh, the Reds were that. Okay. That's what they were. See, yes. Go ahead. Do you know ahead. why they were called the Red Stockings for some years, Mr. Lawson? Yeah. Why? Well, you can share it. Because of their socks. <laughs> No, but why did but why did they drop the monkier reds the monitor? for a while? Uh, it, was, yeah, it was in the in the. I pit. heard the story, but I don't remember. To be what honest. year was it? Eighteen in, in the nineteen fifties, they dropped the nickname Reds. Why? Eighteen. Okay. Nineteen fifties. Because yeah. that was synonymous with the communist. Communist. Ah, okay. And Compton is right. It was red legs, but they also were yeah. red stockings for a while because, the, you know, that. So, anyway. Well, yeah, it was both of them. Yeah, I do remember that. I, I think it depends on who you was listening to, Compton, on the radio, what radio station, what radio voice that was speaking about them. But either way... Yes. Okay, so what was the name of the Indians before the Indians? The Browns. Spiders. They were also the Browns at one time. Really? I don't know. I'm just seeing if you'd believe me. Oh, well, I didn't. So I had to ask you. <laughs> yeah, the Spiders. And they named him the Indians after a guy named Sock Alexis, and he was off. Of, he's from Indian Island here in my town, um, and that's who they named it after, Indian Island uh, Sock Alexis. So they named him the Indians. Interesting. So when did this become a uh, a podcast about baseball? Today. See, Today. we only can okay. continue talking about it if Brad wants to. Because he wants to talk about how we got to be a podcast about. Bigfoot and shit. He wants to talk about <laughs> soccer. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily. We'll, we'll give you the mic right now for soccer. The the world's greatest sport. Hmm. Depends on who you ask. No, it is yeah. the world's greatest sport. <laughs> if you go down south, the only go continent, the <laughs> only continent that does not play. The beautiful game is. Who cares? <laughs> mm. John I'm Jacobs ready. is right. Oh, the house of silver and gold is going down, baby. Oh, I yes. Let's get some of those football players out there and make them run seven miles. We'll see all the offensive and defensive linemen and cardiac arrest. Oh my gosh, look at all the muscle they have and all the weight well, they got on them. Well, they, they go like heck for 15 seconds and then rest for three minutes. But anyway, that's fine. Yeah, every, every sport, every sport has its, um, 
um, its advantages and disadvantages. It's fine. I would like to see any of them soccer players take a good hit from Mean Joe Green in his past. Exactly. He is able to run a thousand flipping yards with a little 50. <laughs> can't tackle a soccer player. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. Hold I mean, it. How Hold it. Good. They run so much. Nick, if you don't, if you don't mean know Joe Green and say he can run speak. seven miles. So you're saying that now soccer, you can go tackle a soccer player? There are tackles in soccer matches all the time. But is it legal? There are legal tackles and there are illegal tackles. Well, maybe I need to look at soccer again because the last time I watched, they weren't tackling each other. <laughs> you don't know what a tackle is. Uh, Gypsy, I played all of the sports coming up. I did play American football. I was center on offense and nose guard on defense in the flag football league no <laughs> Compton, wow. rugby baby there's a man sport rugby uh, now rugby yeah that, yes, sir. Sir. that one's a little different there's some rough ass people now, in that i'm waiting for nick to come back and go oh let's talk about the boston bruins mm. they win Oh, I'm sorry. Stephen Batson says this is why I don't watch sport commentary. Ask a coin question. Bring us back to to yeah, real. I, do. I agree. Bring it back to coins. I don't mind, guys. I know, I know shit ton more about coins than I do any sports. So oh. they do so, flip the yes. coin. For the we are we are dying. Game. We are dying for numismatic questions here. Please lead us back. <laughs> Yeah, I agree, guys. Come on. We just did. Uh, you know what? I was, I must have done a damn good presentation because there was no question. Did do a, it was design. a good presentation, and it was very helpful because I'm going to be going to look at those um, Mercury Dimes collections at the auction. Well, so well, it was Robert, very helpful. There, I didn't have a question because by the time I woke up, I had forgotten what I wanted to ask. Well, okay. <laughs> Uh, Nick, don't forget those two types. You may want to review it again. I am going to review it again. Yeah, the one thing I noticed in the Mercury Dimes, there's actually one I never got an opportunity okay. to put into the presentation, mm -hmm. and that is in 1917, there's a transitional, okay? Okay. And it's a transitional from 16 to 18. They changed the design very minute, but the only place I know with that is in Lang's book. And when I see Brad tomorrow, mm -hmm. I'll see if I can borrow his book, pick up some photographs. Yeah, I, I've got the Lang book. I just don't have. I can't. I do, yeah, I'd it. really appreciate that because there's four I, sets going up for auction, and right now nobody's bidding on them. I'm well, not sure I have Lang's dime book in my downtown library. I'm sorry, that might okay, be at home. Um, if I find it, I'll get it no matter what. But I, no, I ho no, silver no. asks, why are dimes smaller than nickels? Let's talk about that. Okay, well, well let me finish what I'm saying, and then we will. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Um, what I was going to say, Nick, is don't worry too much about the transitional design mm -hmm. differences because you'll have to have them on the uncirculated pieces. Oh, the, the, yeah, the change is so minute, it would be hard to tell on a circulated piece. But the two patterns I showed at the beginning uh -huh. of the podcast, those are the ones you look for because they have got enough difference that you can notice them on even circulated pieces. Mm -hmm. Now, go ahead with what you were asking Brad. Hi Ho Silver said, why are dimes smaller than nickels? Well, because dimes are made out of precious metal and nickels are not. That would be the only explanation I have. Okay, well, now they're not made of precious metal. I said right now. Well, now it's just tradition. Do you yes, understand right. tradition? Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, yeah, because today nickels. And Compton, Compton bought a two cent piece today. So tell us more about your two cent piece. What year? What condition? Shiny, shiny says it goes at twenty three uh, seventy seven. And uh, Macario Acosta says is toning regarded as a plus by the grading companies. And I can say unequivocally yes and no. <laughs> and I agree a hundred percent. Me too. Me too. Pretty toning. Pretty toning is a plus. Ugly toning is a minus. Is a minus. And I do not like toning for that reason. I see more ugly toning than I see pretty toning. Well, absolutely. And the problem. I, I agree talk. with Nick. Yeah. Oh my God, and you know what tones the grossest is the American Silver Eagle. 
Oh, I've seen some of them, Nick, that I promise you, you'd love. Really? Got, I, I've seen a lot of artificial toning on those, I, but I don't, I haven't seen many rainbows. Right. Well, there's no, but there, uh, Brad, 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 before you say anything, tell her about the ASC that come in the set that I believe it was you that had one also. It came out of the holder and was in with all that velvet and I believe you send it away, but go ahead. Most American silver eagles haven't been along, around long enough to tone properly. Okay. So the ones that have toned have usually been in some type of aftermarket holder with a felt-like mm -hmm. uh, lining, and that's what causes them to tarnish. So if you see a wildly toned silver eagle, chances are it's homemade. Okay. But not all the time. But mm. the true rainbow toning that you're looking for, like in Morgan Dollars, right? They, no, haven't, they haven't been they haven't been around long enough to have that happen. That's where I've seen a lot of the pretty toning is on a Morgan. Okay, John Jacob says half dimes are way smaller. That's right because they're half the size of a dime. A dime. <laughs> Hence the name. <laughs> oh, Compton, 1868 and VG, neat. So. Um, Nice brown coin, I hope. It's uh that's a that's a wholesome coin for somebody to have. Very nice. Uh, yeah. Nick, just let you Are know. Are you starting your collection? What was that, Robert? I was about to start muting Brad whenever I start talking because he keeps interrupting me. <laughs> <laughs> However, Nick, what I was about to say is I do know they had when they put together a set. For the ASEs, I can't remember if it was four or five coins, but one of them, for some reason, I I do know for a fact there was several sets that the one, I guess through the automation, it kept coming out of the package and it turned this absolutely stunningly gorgeous, the one I seen, the mm -hmm. one I've seen, I've seen more than one, they turned this beautiful purple. This one guy took in. This one dealer, he said, man, he said, I'm going to return this to the mint because he had left it sealed for many, many, for a long time. He said, because it's missing the set. And I looked at it. I said, well, let me see that set. And we took out all, and it's like, wait, it's too heavy. We found the coin underneath, oh. and it had turned into a beautiful violet color almost. He got it, um, he got it slabbed, and I want to say, for at the time about a forty dollar coin, he got something like six or seven hundred dollars for that thing. Holy that smokes! So beautiful. Wow. It was. So nice but I concur with you. Most of them are ugly. I yeah. Glad. But most of them are uh, artificial. So uh, before my local coin store closed, and he was teaching me a lot of things, and then he would teach me a lot of things too that weren't so good that I know is not good, but. <laughs> but he took he he had a couple of ASCs that were ugly toning, and he took an eraser to it. Well, and then what I said, he says, and this will make it look better. But then you look under the scope and you could see the marks. So I was like, nah, I don't think I want to do that. Okay. Max says, I bought a dirty tone Franklin from Daniel and it's beautiful to me, but I know others don't like it. Remind me that toning can be unique to the holder. <laughs> Max, that's exactly why I do not particularly care to sell tone coins because I've looked at tone coins and I was like, man, that is dog ugly. Mm -hmm. But other people said, oh, that's the most beautiful tone coin I've ever seen. I, I don't get it. So, I mean, and I'll be honest, I don't, you know. I don't I, like I tone coins either. It I mean, I've seen some I love, but for the most part. That's very f far few in between. If it has a pretty rainbow and it's like, you know, the Skittles colors. <laughs> <laughs> and then I might want to taste that rainbow. I like it every once in a while. <laughs> I'm out of that one. Oh boy, Brad's Brad's got that one going. He's got a head. Well, there's some that. people that go really cuckoo over a, a pretty rainbow coin. Is that cuckoo for cocoa puffs? Kind of, but you know, maybe the you know fruity pebbles. Yes, you do, Mac. <laughs> But there are a lot of people too that are that are doing it artificially as well. Right. I believe what John Jacobs meant to say is black. 
Yes, he he, he yes. came back and said black later. Right. Yes, but, if that is the terminal tone. Um, I can say I've seen black tone. If it's got luster to it, original luster, I think it's beautiful. Other than that, I had an 1821 bust half once in a PCGS Gen One holder rattler that was a like black obsidian and uh we called it black beauty and and we owned it for a while and it's moved on i you know that was a real that was the only black cool coin that i can remember what owning coin was it though that that also was black but came out of the mint that way like a nickel or something yeah nickel that's from yeah. the center of planchet though yeah the black beauty 59 Yes, okay. You yeah. can get them 57, 58, 59. Yeah. I think maybe even mm -hmm. 56, yo. There was a few years, but 59 is the one they had that holder. And... Oh, I think, yeah. Well, Amax took that son of a blip and bleep, bleep, bleep holder was like 40 or $50 to right. get it in that. It's like, you gotta be shit me. But it's got the, um, the black, I, I don't know if it's a, a black stallion. I guess it's a black stallion, but. Um, They've got it as a black beauty holder. It, it's a gorgeous holder. I've sold one or two. Same They're here. Absolutely yeah. gorgeous, but it's like, man, come on, ain't it? <laughs> $50, really? I mean, holy shit. Well, Stephen true. Bassett likes sight white coins. There's nothing wrong with that. There's That's how most coins, most modern coins should be preserved. Think though, Nick, of some. Do you have any really gemmy gem walkers? And do some of them have like, how should I describe it? Maybe like a silver dusty mm -hmm. surface to them. Isn't isn't that just amazing? When it's just got that little bit of fairy dust on the surface, right? That right. you can it's tell beautiful. they haven't been dipped, they haven't been messed with. They they just it, it's it, when once you see one and you it's, fall in love with it, yeah. you know what I'm talking about. I do know what you're talking about, and it's it's lovely, but it's history <laughs> that right. hasn't been messed with. Right. And I Ricario think that, I, has the uh, uh, black rhodium plated uh, maple leaf. Yes. Nice. Uh, Mac. Those yeah, are those are made that way. They have have great luster coming through the color. They're gorgeous. The Canadian Mint has done a, a number of different types of coloring jobs on their coins over the years. So yeah. that's a beauty. Uh, this camera never picks up the color that good. But that's that's the, I think that's a pretty toning. Well, if you've seen it in person, Nick, I promise it's a little bit nicer than what you can see through the camera, but. I like it. Uh, uh, it's a very, very beautiful coin. That hurts it. Yeah. That hurts it too. Yep. That's why I leave that off. I tried it. So, but no, that's uh, that's one of them we got for tomorrow. I just took and thought I'd show it to you. Uh, it. I like so the less. I bid seven dollars, Robert. That's going to be on tomorrow. Yes, it will. Oh, I'll have to. Come on in, but I've got that Remember, one. Already. God, I'll be down at your place tomorrow. I can't wait to start bidding on your shit. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I know there's some yellow pieces I want to bid. I mean, I'll be fair. I'll bid fifty dollars, and I'll be. I won't be as cheap as you. I have a gold piece. I will sell you for fifty dollars. Uh, I want real gold. <laughs> it is real gold. Okay, I don't want little chips. <laughs> it's technically not a chip. Okay, well, I already know it's going to be something, but no. Flakes? I, I'll Flakes. be the one picking it. Yeah, probably. Because I know he just bought a couple of vials. Of it's gold. not gold plated. Hold on. I'll go get it. Oh I mean, he, he, he just bought a couple of vials of actual gold. And I mean, there's some, yeah, there are flakes and things of like that. So, I, yeah. It's real gold. It's just I don't know if it, I don't know if it be can place or actual. Oh, there. You, oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, how much, well, how much gold is in there? 14 carat is <laughs> oh, 14 not real gold. It's got a mixture. I want 24k, baby. Oh, so a pre 33 US gold isn't real gold because it's only 90%, Robert. <laughs> better than 14 percent how's that <laughs> well i how much how much go, how much gold's in 14 carat robert i'm sorry i know i said 14 percent. i meant to say 14 carat so forget it no this was my right. first gold piece i i did what you got to get I, a little closer nick looks like a five is it a five or a ten it's, it's a five, a five. yes 1880 1880 what 1885 s cool very nice that was my that was my first piece but when i was trying to remember you know of course before then a couple of grams here and there but this was my first real piece that i got how neat yep yeah we were talking about that i think last stream. last week and i couldn't remember so i promised that i would come back and and show you which one was my first well i can't that's very I did... nice thank you yeah, I sold my first piece. It was the, we talked about it, it was a double eagle. So, but I've gotten one to replace it. It's just that it was one of those things, like Brad said, the price of gold went up so high. I sold it. And when gold and that went back down, I bought me a new one. Well, and, and sometimes you want to do that, though, because it's a good investment to do that, to turn your money into something else. But um, we're not supposed to be too emotional attached to our stuff as well. I listened to a guy named Jay Bravo, and like he said, money's all you always got to be moving your money if you want to make money. And right. Is that the, yeah. That's true. That's legit. It, it, and we don't move when we should because we get too emotionally attached. So we need to watch that emotion as well. Don't put so much emotion into it. Hence what I was talking about earlier turning gold and silver into fiat currency. Exactly. exactly. We, we agree twice today. And David, I'm, yes, I, I, I think I'm going to have to shoot myself. <laughs> I've won several of the 2016 W Mercury Dimes, and yes, they've went up. Um, I I own, well, I know Brad just picked one up, and he's got probably two or three of them, but he's about the only person I know of that's got more than I do, because I do have <laughs> several of them. <laughs> I mean, they did a really good job that year. They did what? The Walking Liberty half dollar, and then they did... You know what, well, Nick? I sort of, kind of, um, I. Which one was? Well, there's. He's got the seventy MS or FP seventy. He just got that one. So how much is that going for, Brad? Well, I would sell it to anyone else. Ten cents. <laughs> <laughs> but the, he offered seven dollars for my half dollar, so I think. About two dollars and fifty cents. That'd be good for that. I don't remember what did the mint charge for the twenty sixteen. Um, not that much. Times not that much. No, but gold is significantly higher it's now. Higher, of course. So yes, yes, they uh, the twenty sixteen W dime has increased in value. Two hundred and five dollars is what they charged when they first came out. I believe. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, so. You know, I, I think wholesale on raw ones is what three and a quarter or so now, so somewhere okay. in there. Robert, yeah, you'll charge me double. Morning. It should say on the line. Should be able to look it up. Emotions ruin a good business. That's Thank you, Stephen. We we know Brad doesn't have. Any emotions, so that's, that's why he's doing so well. <laughs> plenty of emotions. You depress me, you anger me, you <laughs> well on PCGS it says two hundred and five dollars. It says that uh June 17th, 2016, each time had an issue price of two hundred and five dollars if purchased directly from the United States mint. That's what it says on PCGS, guys. Okay, hi David. Well, Robert Pinto said two eighty nine. I'm not certain. Uh, I didn't know if he was trying to reference the original price, but the original price, I believe, was about two hundred. Think he's offering him two eighty nine. Let's see. Maybe he wants to buy it. Oh, that could be. No, <laughs> I didn't say I'll buy it for that. I tried. Price. Even even tried, Nick Robert. can't buy it for that cheap. <laughs> okay, guys, don't forget we're about done here. So it's five o'clock now. Uh, time for this party to end. 
Thank you, each and every one. We appreciate everybody. Don't forget, after we're done with this podcast, in the comments, you want to type in Dime FBL. If you can't remember what FBL, just go and remember Florida Lena Barati Lawson. There you go. But all you need is Dime FBL, guys. Dime FBL. And you will be registered to uh, win. One second, I'll show you. You'll be registered when this dime, well, it's not a dime, it's one ounce of fine silver. It's a rendition of a mercury dime, but it's one ounce, like I say, a pure silver. That's what you'll be registered to win. So, again, thank you everybody for joining us. We appreciate it. We hope you share this out with all your people in all your sub stacks and stuff. But, however, Nick, let's. Tell us a little bit about where people can see you other than right here. <laughs> on my channel tonight from 6 to 7, Surfer and I will be on. And uh, on the Coin Tribe channel tonight at 8 to 9. Oh, nice. Awesome. Thank you, Nick. Let's go to, I don't know, take and pick somebody. There you go, Joe Durbin. It's up to you. There you are. Hey, thank you, guys. Good show today, Robert. Thank you for that presentation. We'll have our next auction tomorrow at 2 Central. Over on my channel. Thank you guys all. See you next week. And Bradley. Well, I think Robert forgot to promote the fact that next week we're going to be talking bus coins. So, any of you out there that want to know anything about bus coins, pick a series, ask a question, get in early and often, and uh, we're going to have kind of a little panel discussion here uh, amongst ourselves as well as taking questions from you at home and uh, subject matter bus coins so have fun and we will see you next week and i uh, thank you brad thank you nick thank you well alden good luck at your doctor's appointment but thank you and joe durden like he said don't forget tomorrow night at about or tomorrow about two o'clock p.m central standard time joe will be having an option and then at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we'll have an auction right here at YouTube showing up. We hope you join us, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. And don't forget, as soon as we're done with this podcast, go to the comment section, type in Dime FBL, and you'll be registered to win that one ounce silver round. So take care, everybody. We love you. Much love. We'll see you tomorrow right here on YouTube showing up. Good night, all.